I'm going to create logic diagrams in Inkscape so that we can use them for documentation and things like that. We're going to start with the open new document and then we're going to open object symbols tab and under the drop down choose logic symbols. Uh, we're going to just choose all the logic symbols for our particular um, circuit or logic diagram and then just place those in the document. Once you have selected all of your logic elements, you can then control shift D and go to document properties and choose pixels. All of the symbols in the existing Inkscape library are in pixels. I'll then make my grid units pixels and I'll change my major grid line to denote incremental changes later on. And I chose 10 for a major grid line and always snap to objects. Now we're going to arrange and fix our logic symbols in the order that we like. You can see some of the objects snap to different points depending on where you click and drag them. This isn't important right now, but once we create inputs and outputs for each one of these symbols, it will become more important. So we're going to add our tails or our inputs and outputs per logic symbol. And I just chose three major grid units, which is 30 pixels in our case. It seems to look pretty clean and spread things out for documentation and labs. If we look at our diagram, we can see we have a crossover, a couple intersection points. So we need to take that into account as we lay stuff out. Again, I'm going to put in all of my tails and then I'm going to group these later so that I actually have one object and then I can start connecting pieces more freely. Objects like the OR gate, they don't exactly snap unless you zoom in, but what we're going to do is just create our 30 pixel tail on each side and then use the cusp node on the front of the gate to go 30 pixels. I'm then going to group that front node with the symbol and then I know actually that my increments are set up to individual pixels so I can just keyboard the object over and snap it to the rest of the body. I'm then going to group the AND gates together and now I'm going to start on the inverters. Notice that I'm grouping this to the cusp node and it's hard for me to quickly just snap that three blocks or grid lines later. So I am just moving my object to make it easy on myself. Once I've done both tails, I can group that together. I'm going to delete the original and just copy and paste the one that exists since it's the same symbol. Okay. I'm lastly going to add the outputs on my AND gates and then group all of these together. Okay, all of my objects are finished. I'm going to add in the name of my inputs. I'm going to use typical A, B, and Q for my inputs and then Q for the output. I like to size and then lock the constraints of the text. And the reason I'm doing it this way is because it aligns better with my grid and my objects. You could change the font size if you'd like and the font type. Okay. I chose 15 pixels because aesthetically I think it looks good. Okay, now I'm just going to use my alignment tool and make sure that everything is aligned horizontally. And then now I'm going to align things vertically. But before I do that, let's align the objects just so I get a rough idea of where I'm going. And careful where they snap. Those are lined up. I'm going to move my second input and then just align those vertically. Okay, and then make sure that I align the next thing horizontally. 
Okay, the order of that is important so that everything looks even. I'm going to start connecting a few of my gates to make sure my layout makes sense. And notice that A goes to the inverter as well as the lower AND gate. So again, I'm just using that rule of three pixels to sort of, uh, or three grid lines, 30 pixels to sort of separate my objects. And that way every tail is pretty consistent. Now I'm going to get some crossover in these two objects. So right now, if I follow the same strategy, my A and B inputs look like they should connect before going to each of the AND gates. So what I'm going to do is sort of use the smaller grid lines by zooming in and then just creating a space. So I use my Bezier Curve tool and then just stop it and then snap back to the grids. And now I've created a gap that's equidistant on each side. And that helps distinguish them being not connected. Okay, I'll finish off the outputs of the AND gates into the OR gate. And I'm going to now just line up that output Q. And just do a horizontal alignment. And that looks pretty good. The last thing I'm going to do is to make sure that any intersections that I have are clear, I'm going to add a circle and I'm just going to do a black fill and I'm going to remove the stroke. And that's to make sure I don't accidentally mix it up with a node on the inverter or something like that. And I'm going to actually cut away part of the circle and make it a semicircle. And I like the size five pixels by five pixels because it fits well and it's a little bit smaller than the node on the inverter. And by making it partial circle, I could snap to the center and hit right on that intersection. And again, I'm going to copy and paste that same circle and snap it right on the center. If you triple click, you can just hit the whole circle tool and that'll bring it right back. And again, triple click on the circle and then hit the hole and your object should be done. Hit four and see your entire drawing and everything should look pretty well aligned and you have completed your first thing. I'm going to do control shift D and then just resize page to content and to the drawing. And that gives me a complete SVG that I can throw into a latex document or my documentation, a website, anything like that. And uh, I'm just going to save it as uh, an SVG to make sure that it's a scalable vector and I can export it into other formats if I'd like.